So to talk in more depth about the benefits from a tourism point of view, I'd like to welcome John Dunn, Program Manager for the New Zealand Cycle Trails. So do you bring my first one up? Th thanks very much, Virgil. Uh, the, the reason the government in invested in the New, Ze New Zealand Cycle Trail pr primarily was to grow the economy, uh, not just in, in the whole country, but specifically for the regions. This one's not working. Oh, okay. And to get it on. Is it on? Hello. Is that on? No. Is that on? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, to, to grow the economy, um, not only for the whole country, but in particular for the regions where we've got cycle trails, one of which is Hawke's Bay. Now, to, to, um, I suppose that growing that economy was in two parts. The first part was, was about developing world-class cycle trails. We've heard from several people, including Deputy Mayor, that the Hawke's Bay trails are certainly rated as, as world-class. The second part, really, and that's probably more what I'm going to talk about uh, this afternoon, is, is about attracting tourists. Uh, the investment has been in building the concrete paths and, and the limestone paths, but that investment alone won't make any returns at all to the bay if the tourists don't come. So I'd like to sort of focus on that, and just working through the slides, I'll do a coverage just of what the New Zealand Cycle Trail is about and where we're at. Uh, I'll, go to, I'll go around the country to some ca case studies and I'll pick out the best examples of the things that I want to, want to talk about and then at the end just put some challenges up to the Hawke's Bay Trail about what's great about the Hawke's Bay Trail and then what are the opportunities for the panel to talk about in, in the last session this afternoon. So that's what the New Zealand Cycle Trail looks like on a map. We'll have 23 trails, we've got 21 right now, we've got two more that are, that are on the books, and we've got 300 kilometres to build, so we've, we're just about there, um, percentage wise, it'll take a long time to get around that 2,700 kilometres. The, the, the second point on that map is you can see against the edge of the blue, we've got that yellow, green, blue and black, and that's, that's the gradient of the trails. So Hawke's Bay is one of the few that are yellow. Um, yellow is the easiest grade. You've got another colour poking out the side there. I think it might be a bit of, a bit of blue as well, um, which is probably the landscape trail. The, um, the other point that we've got is we've connected most of the trails, most of the great rides with, with the major urban areas on a series of quiet backcountry roads. Now there's a couple around here. There's one that's down State Highway uh, 52 heads down towards the Wairapa, and there's another one that pops over the Gentle Eddy up towards the, the mountains to see. You can see that swivel um, um, just, just from Wanganui heading, heading up towards Taupo. So we're connecting the great rides with each other and the great rides with the, the, urban, the, the other urban areas like, say, Palmerston, North Wellington. Um, and you'll note that there's not really any cycle trails in the, in the urban areas at, at this stage. Uh, primarily because they didn't meet the criteria of outstanding landscape. Um, the other, I, I suppose the other point to, to mention is part of the economic development was getting jobs on the ground quickly. We're up to 950 now. We'll, we will go over 1,000 by the time we build our, our last trail. But that's the short-term construction jobs. The, and a good point about the cycle trail is that the amount of money invested wasn't huge but the number of jobs um, per, per dollar is significantly greater than, for example, the, you know, the tunnel that Grant mentioned, 400 million. Um, that, pro that wouldn't have created that amount of jobs for, you know, we, we only had 10% of that money. So it was a great way of creating jobs. But the really good news is that downstream, and I'll probably bring the next slide up to talk about it, um, the first bullet point is, is the, is the long-term economic benefits. Now, of those um, four bullet points, one of the points I'll make is what's been done and what's still in the future. Now you've delivered your short term economic benefits of building the trails, but you haven't delivered the long term economic benefits yet, you've started. The long term economic benefits will be extra employment, 
um, whether it's cycle hiring businesses, whether it's accommodation, new accommodation that pops up or more, more people being employed by local motels as tourists come here. That's something for you to look forward to. It's robust, it's sustainable, it's year in, year out, and it just keeps going. Uh, the next bullet point, we definitely do have the world-class cycling experience. Um, we've got I saw Neil here today and, and Graham from the Regional Council to thank for that. And I, I suppose the other point that is important was the just the uh, input from and funding from, from the council, from the Regional Council in particular, and, and the other councils here. Um, the Rotary Pathway, which was here before we started, and um, we had a, a, br a bridge sponsor, I think it was it, Charanaki Savings Bank, TSB? Yeah, out at, out at um, Hamawana. So it was fantastic to see the level of, of, of funding commitment from the local community. Um, Grant talked, talked about the health. Uh, it, was, it was on the table right from the start. Green Party are co-partners in the, in the project, and that was their really objectives, that we keep an eye on those things, and we've, we've heard from Grant, and we'll hear from Todd further about the benefits from the livability and, and, the, and the health. So they're certainly there, and, and the commuting is, is, it just makes sense. Um, you, you know, you, you do certainly save money. So there's quite a, a nice alignment with the objectives of this conference, which we've put together, um, probably, are probably not necessarily looking um, exactly at what the original benefits were for the cycle trial project, but it, it lines up quite nicely. Um, yeah, collaboration was was the sec sec secret to to our success today. Having the PM involved was was quite 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 significant. He he still is involved. Um, he had an opportunity to maybe to delegate, but chose not to. He still was minister of tourism. Um, that's the only portfolio portfolio he has. I understand. Um, and he keeps a real close, close interest in this project. With that leadership has come the support of the government agencies and we've had a whole host of them that have come in behind us. We were meeting with Doc uh, earlier this week. Doc have got a wee bit more funding to help out and are doing some significant enhancements of, of the trials that they look after. They've got about five trials. Uh, we've had Tourism New Zealand, um, I know I was talking to Andy just before having a coffee. Tourism New Zealand is starting a marketing campaign offshore, so they've been a fantastic partner as well. And we've had people like Kiwi Rail, um, Land Information New Zealand, Landport, um, and you know, a lot of government departments have, have, have got behind us and, and helped with the project. Perhaps the most significant point is, is really when we get to the local point, uh, the local, local community is, is actually how, how were these uh, great roads rolled out? And it was, I would say, 99% local effort um, and 1% of the effort from, from above. And, and that's been quite a credit to everyone that's been involved in, in doing that. And then spreading it from just not just the, the local team that's physically awarding the contracts and out there on a day to day basis, but drawing in the local community. And I think that's one of the slides that we can think about. Um, for later on is how do, how do we cont continue to involve the community. Um, some of the percentage numbers that Grant popped up, you can see we've actually got some, some room to, to improve on, on getting people riding. And from a tourism point of view, the, the people that actually uh, you know, connect with the, with the cyclists, the people that actually create jobs, are the tourist operators, not the people that build the tracks. So we have to work as, as a collaboration um, continue, continuing with the tourist operators if we want to get the maximise the return out, out of the investment in, in the bay. Uh, the, the brand, we've had that for about three years now, so we've not only got that on, um, it's popping up all around the stuff, around the place, it's on little posts around the trails, it's, it's on websites, um, our official partners are, are using it, so the, the brand works well, the, the pronunciation of, of the Maori uh, name on that is Nga Kairinga. And, and that means the journeys. So it's, it's, it's starting to work and um, it's simple um, and it, it, it works really great the top one when you've sort of got the negative on, on the black background. Um, here's a slide on marketing strategy. Uh, it's, it's, I've put this um, slide together for, for um, Chris Tremaine actually because he said, what are you guys doing about, about marketing it? And, Sort of thought, well, it's, it is quite hard to describe verbally, so I had a shot of this, this little pyramid. Um, up the top, you've got basically the, the New Zealand Cycle Trial team, 
And that's, that's, that's got a relatively small um, marketing and communication capability, but what it has done is to be able to influence and get support from everyone else beneath it and out to the side. So um, underneath the um, NZCT is the 23 great rides, and each of those great rides have a connection to, to marketing. But more importantly, at the bottom we've got 500 plus official partners. Now just to give you an idea of, of how well this is going, Queenstown's got 34 official partners, Nelson's got 115. Okay, so there's probably not 115 people here, but Nelson would actually have more people, official partners, businesses, you know, than we've got in this room right now. So they're all signed up and they're all marketing on behalf of, of the Nelson Trail. So that's another, another opportunity. Um, out, out to the left is Tourism New Zealand, and they're doing some good work. They got some extra money from the from the PM uh, just about a month ago, 158 million, I think, over four years. And quite a chunk of that has to go towards cycle trail marketing. So you're going to benefit directly from that. They're going to have a special sector for cycle trail, trail marketing. They're looking specifically at um, East Coast Australia, West West Coast USA, um, where they've got a good presence and they can get some quick bang for bucks. On the right hand side, which is where Hawke's Bay will get most of its um, cycle tourists from, is at the top we've got working with the RTOs. Uh, I've, I've got another slide that talks about the RTO effort. Uh, there's no doubt about it that Annie and her team have, have been uh, right up the front with, I, I listed three about six months ago. We had, we had Hawke's Bay, we had Motu, which is up at Opotake, and that wasn't an RTO but they had an independent consultant marketing them. And the third one was the Ruapehu Trail, um, which we call Mountains to the Sea from uh, Visit Ruapehu. So those three groups were definitely leading the charge uh, in, in the marketing area uh, domestically, which is fantastic to see. So <laughs> coupled with getting, I, I suppose, the same story with the official partners, your, your opportunity really exists to, to get a lot of people to the bay to ride. And um, what I've suggested at the end that you might like to set some target numbers to measure it against and see how it's going. Now, web strategy is um, yeah, web, everyone, everyone's got a website these days, and I've just tried to clarify it on uh, on one slide. And basically, potential cycle tourists can, can hit the trail at least in three ways, at least in four ways. <clears throat> on the on the top is, is is the Tourism New Zealand website called NewZealand.com. They, they get four million <coughs> visits a year. So we've got, <coughs> we've got quite a, um, a strong presence. Yeah, we've got quite a strong presence on that website. Now the good thing about it is that all the local tourism businesses can also be on that website as well. So someone could have, a, you know, anywhere in the world could go into NewZealand.com find out about the, the bike shop that was on the very first um, interview that Virgil put up and go straight to that local um, operator and, and actually make a booking. Okay, so that there's no sort of um, impediment to, to do that. Um, ditto with, our, with, when I say our, it's New Zealand Cycle Trail website, it's called nzcycletrail.com. And, and then as we, we've also got either the uh, local RTO or some of the local trails have their own websites. Uh, again, all these have listings of the tourism businesses, or you know, there's nothing to stop a potential um, cycle tourist overseas going going straight to um, Takara Trails, for example, and boom, making a booking direct. So there's a, everyone's you know basically calling the same tune. We've got the branding working across um, across all, all, all of it, and, it, and it's, it's lighting up, and it, it's now working. Uh, media, the media has been really good to, to the New Zealand Cycle Trail. We we monitor the media, as as I'm sure a lot of people in this room do. We get we're getting sort of 50 to 60 media um, articles across the country every every month. Uh, it's it's hard to find a negative one. At, at the best, we'll get a neutral one where someone might say something that might be discussed in an open forum, which is fair enough thing to have a debate about. We'll get about two or three of those. The other, the other 55 are, are, are positive, and we put all those up on our website. And the other thing we're starting to see now is that, that our partners, uh, there's a company there called Pure Trails, and you can see that they have their own website. They are marketing one of the cycle trails called the Ox to Ocean in the South Island. 
and there's an ability, um, you can see right on the bottom right, to book now. So our partners are now starting to, 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 to market the, the trails direct. Uh, trends is... Um, trends